Remember the awesome F100? Well, it now seems to have a bigger, older brother. This is the Stormer 220 from Furibee. So next in from Gearbest is the next in a very, very long and increasing line of Furibee racing quads. And this time it is the Stormer 220. Now, this one comes in a really nice presentation box and it's odd how differently presented these quads are. But anyway, this is the Stormer 220. It's another 220 class quad and you remember that we've got the Dark Max as well, which is also 220 size. So it's gonna be very interesting to compare the two. This one is, I say, from Gearbest. It retails about £135 or $140, and that's without an FR Sky receiver. If you have the FR Sky receiver, then it comes with an XM Plus, and it's about another $10, $15 or pounds more. So, first of all, we've got some props. We've got two sets in total, one that you need to attach to the quad, and obviously then a set of spares. And we've got a battery strap and also some anti-slip sticker as well. Then inside this lovely presented box, we've got the actual quad. So a quick look at the additional accessories. We've got the quad in the middle, and we'll have a look at that in more detail in a minute. Now, this is quite a nice touch. We actually get a mount for an action camera, which is quite nice. Um, not only is it a mount, but it's a rubberized protector. So that's quite a nice touch, not seen that before. We also get a Pagoda antenna. Now, this does look rather cheap, uh, but that doesn't mean it's no good. So we'll have to test that in the flight test. But yeah, interesting choice to give a Pagoda rather than your traditional circular antenna type. And that is actually it besides the quad. So let's have a look at that in more detail now. So here it is, the Stormer 220. And as I said, it's very comparable this to the Dark Max 220, which is the same size class quad. Now let's just immediately, and I don't normally do this, but jump to a weight comparison. So if we look first of all at the Dark Max, that one comes in at about 295 grams. If we now weigh the Stormer, this one comes in at 331. So the Stormer is slightly heavier. And that is also key to some of the specification that we'll talk about in a minute. But anyway, looking at the quad itself, so this is 3K carbon fiber. The arms on this thing are actually separate to the main body um, and they are four mil carbon fiber. So a bit like the Dark Max, you're gonna be struggling to break this. It's certainly gonna take an impact very well, I would say. It does feel very well built, very solid as well, which is nice. Now, in the center of this one, again, like the Dark Max, we've got an F4 flight controller as well. It's an omnibus stack in here, and that has an integrated OSD and also a VTX included in there. That's a 48 channel VTX, and it's also switchable 25, 100, and 200 milliwatts. So nice to have that sort of choice in there. The antenna on the rear, the port, which goes from that VTX is very much like the Dark Max as well, facing upwards, and you'd plonk your Pagoda on there. Now that, I'm not too sure about the safety of having a port upright like that. If you do have an antenna going onto that, it's gonna take quite a bit of impact. Now the other thing I noticed on the Dark Max and this quad is that the actual port itself was a little bit loose. So when you, if you do get one of these, make sure you just tighten up the retaining locking screw on there, just to make sure that as you turn the antenna, you're not actually twisting the wire behind it because that's gonna break things. Connected to the VTX on the front, we've got a rather lovely camera here. Now it's actually a programmable camera. Uh, notice there's a tiny little joystick on the back. However, getting to that joystick is going to be quite tricky. Uh, not ideally designed that. It's a bit of a Roncam clone this. However, it does come with a really, really nice lens on there. We've got a 2.5 mil lens that gives an FOV of about 130 degrees. It is a HS1177 clone essentially. It's a 600 TVL camera. Um, but yeah, it looks really, really nice. That lens especially is very, very very nice looking. On top of the stack in the middle, we have got the integrated receiver. I did opt to get the uh, FR Sky receiver included, so I've got the XM Plus. And what's really nice is that, unlike many of these quads, the antennas are actually rooted really nicely and they're actually heat shrinked already for me as well. Quite a lot of the time when you buy a quad with an integrated receiver, they just attach it via the UARTs and then stick the antennas out anywhere. But it's nice that they've actually rooted these properly so I don't need to do anything. So looking then towards the side, we've got an XT60 connector. Now that 
that is quite odd how it is rooted to the side in that way. Don't normally see these rooted outwardly like that, they're normally from the rear, but no major issue there, although I don't like the potential strain that we might have when we're rotating this connector around to hook up to the battery. It's just not particularly great for aerodynamics either. On the rear, we've then got a buzzer, yes, and also an LED strip as well. Not so excited about the LED strip, but still nice to have it as well, and they do look decent. And then finally, the powertrain for this quad. At the bottom of this stack, we've got a four-in-one speed controller board. Now, that's a 35 amp speed controller board, so lots of capacity there. And it's capable from 3S to 6S as well. So any of you voltage junkies can attach your massive batteries to this quad and it should handle it fine. The speed controllers support BL Heli as well and numerous different protocols as we see when we connect up to Betaflight. Connected to that speed controller board are the motors, which are few Furby's own brand. Now these are 2308s and they're only 2200 kV. Just know I've only temporarily attached the props. These are not fixed permanently just to show you what it looks like. But yeah, these are only 2200 kV, so underpowered compared to the Dart Max. Remember that the Dart Max has 2550 kV motors and is lighter than this quad. So performance is gonna be quite an interesting one to compare. As mentioned before, you get props shipped with these and these are 5042 three-bladed props and they look very nice as well. So that's the quad overall, nicely built. Doesn't feel as quality as the Dart Max, but then it is cheaper. So for example, if we look at the underside, we've got no recessed screws on here. They're all sticking out, which I don't particularly like. Uh, also, the motor design is quite interesting on here because they're almost on little stands. Uh, means the bottom side or the underside of the motors are not necessarily very well protected from dirt and rubbish getting in there and potentially also if you do have an impact something potentially is going to break those winds inside there so that would be a shame but yeah let's have a look at how it fares anyway later in the flight test in the meantime let's get it bound to our transmitter and connected up to beta flight So now into beta flight now there's no need for the accelerometer calibration here and so we'll leave that as is from the factory, the XM Plus receiver is set up on UART 6, but we'll come back to that shortly. Looking at the configuration tab, and one shot 125 is selected by default for some reason, so we'll amend that to D shot 600 for now, but we may increase that later. Next, we'll add a craft name, and you can see also that the receiver protocol is currently set correctly to SBUS. All else looks really good, and so we'll click Save and Reboot to store our configuration changes. Now, I've already bound my Tyrannus to the XM Plus receiver, but I noticed that I was getting no control inputs, and so I toggled the serial RX onto UART 1 instead of UART 6, and all then came to life. So that's a factory configuration error. If you get no inputs, try the same fix. Brief look at the PIDs, and we're not gonna change anything here. We're gonna fly it as factory set. So onto the receiver tab, and you can see that the inputs are now working, but the channel map isn't right for an FR Sky receiver. And so we'll amend that to T-A-E-R, and now all is working as expected. Next onto modes, and there are a few set up from the factory, but they're not quite right as we require. Arm is in the wrong position for a two position switch, and so I'll adjust that accordingly. Next, we'll add anti-gravity and set it for horizon and rate mode only on auxiliary two. Now we'll enable air mode and then set those appropriately onto my aux channels. I also like to have a switchable OSD and of course finally I'll add beeper so that I've got a lost model alarm. I'll set that on aux 3, a three position switch which will also be used to toggle my OSD. Click save to store the new configuration and then give it a quick test by toggling all of the switches on and off. And at this point for safety of course I've got the props removed from the quad. Finally, just a quick look at the OSD and many elements are enabled, which leads to a really cluttered display. And so the first thing that we'll do is disable most of them and try and clean it up a little bit, just to show the essentials. Anyway, all done here, it's time to fly. My hands are so cold, I can barely hold this thing up in the air. It is a very chilly, wintry feeling day in England, probably about zero degrees at the moment. But on a positive note, I've got the Fury Beat Stormer 220 here and it's time for the line of sight flight test. So I'm gonna line of sight it first, 
Then once we've done that, we're going to get it on FPV and see how it flies. Now, the only thing I really don't like about this so far is the side exiting power supply for the XT60 connector here. It just feels really vulnerable to me. I prefer it to come out of the back where naturally it comes out and loops around to the battery. This just, to me, does not feel at all natural. Um, almost be worth rotating the flight controller around, but obviously that's going to have other implications. But anyway, let's get it up in the air and give it a flight test. Mode's all working, fail safe is set, ready for it to drop, so up we go. <laughs> and we're up. Now, I remember when I flight tested the Dart Max, I didn't even have to get to half throttle for the hover, whereas this thing, I'm probably just above half throttle for the basic hover. So very different quad to fly, not as much power clearly, uh, but the motors are not 2550s, that's probably going to make a big difference. Uh, much different sound as well from those props that we've got on there. They don't have the winglets like the Dark Max DYS props do. But still, it looks nice in the air. It looks really, really good. Let's have a bit of a fly around, see how it goes. Sounds really nice when you up the uh, the revs on there. Yeah. When you dip the throttle, it's a um, really nice stable quad. Again, it's quick. Those props look nice. Sounds lovely with the wind against the props, and it is a bit breezy today, actually. Um, definitely a candidate for a five cell battery, I would say. This does feel massively underpowered on the 4S. I mean, it's quick, don't get me wrong, it is quick, but you know, it's really quick. <laughs> but it's not as quick as a Dart Max, and that sets a new bench benchmark in terms of Fury V quads. So let's have a look at the punch. So let's get this in the air. Got some noisy idiot on a motorbike, I'm afraid, but hopefully we can blast them out with a punch from this. So here we go, three, two, one. Okay, so yeah, again, it's not a Dark Max. Definitely not a Dark Max, but it's not bad. Let's do that again, three, two, one. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, let's get Acro on and see how this thing goes. <laughs> nice, yeah, it feels nice. Uh, let's do a bit of a roll. Wee! Yeah, Acro is really nice there. I mean, it flies beautifully. I've got really no complaints other than being spoiled by the power of the Dark Max. And it's uh, easy to be spoiled by the power of that incredible quad. Um, does look really good in the air this as well, I must say. Those props make a big difference. And it is quick. Now, as I say, I've got no complaints about it. <laughs> it just hasn't got quite the same impact that the Dark Max has with its ridiculously powerful motors. But I reckon stick a 5S on this and it would be a much, much better quad. Uh, now the battery beeping is because this is only partially charged. So let's get this landed and let's fly it FPV. So Stormer 220 FPV time. And um, first of all, the first thing that's very obvious is that the props are very much in shot on this one. <laughs> Quite unusual for a big quad to see the props in the shot. You normally only get that on the micros. Uh, camera quality actually is quite good. Um, tra transition between ground and sky is pretty good and the contrast, brightness and everything is quite nice on there as well. Lens is giving us a good FOV. So let's get it on the mat and let's get it flight tested. <sighs> now there are lots of twigs of death at this time of year where you've got no leaves on the trees. I absolutely hate those, but let's see how we get on. Straight into rate mode, armed and up we go. Uh, now, just as with the LOS Laws flight, this is very, very smooth. Uh, I've got lovely reception on that VTX as well. Very nice. Very, very nice indeed. Uh, yeah. It, flies very nicely. Now you don't feel the kind of lack of power on the 4S when you're flying this FPV. You don't feel it so much as you do when you're flying it line of sight at least. Um, and it, yeah, it flies very nicely. Very, very nicely. Really nice reception on the VTX. It 
feels fairly quick. Camera quality is nice as well, actually. No, no complaints at all about the camera. Now, I was a bit skeptical about that little pagoda antenna that came with it. And actually, as you can see now, it's not a problem at all. Now, it is actually beeping at me already. And we've not had much of a flight, so maybe this thing isn't quite as economical on power as other quads like the Coppice One, which really spoil us with their really highly efficient motors. Um, this one certainly doesn't seem to be as efficient, and it does feel heavy in the air, but it, it is a heavy quad. So it feels like it definitely needs some pitch tuning. It's very flaky, very wobbly, and a bit floaty. Uh, so yeah, it's got potential, I would say, this quad, definitely. But it's definitely not as good as the dark bags. But it's got a nice punch on it, though. Anyway, let's conclude that one there. So not a bad quad. Doesn't fly too badly. Not as good as the Dark Max, but not many quads are at the moment. Uh, and yeah, let's get to the positives and the negatives. So that's the Stormer 220 from Furibee. Hopefully you've enjoyed the review. And if you did, give this video a thumbs up. Click subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and please comment below with your thoughts because I love your feedback. Thanks very much for watching. <laughs>